In today's video, we talk about why you should never stop learning. What's going on guys, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. It's Wednesday afternoon and it has been an awesome week. And uh, today's video topic comes fresh out of my brain because I was just cruising through some stuff and I've had a few people comment that uh, yesterday's video where I kind of talked about I'm still kind of learning and, and, and adjusting after you know 20 years of fitnessing or whatever you want to call it. And um, <clears throat> so today's message I just want to discuss is why we should never stop learning. Um, you know why I believe that to be the case and I'll give you some examples of some some things that have been a positive in my life because of that um, first of all I'm a coach and so my job I feel very very important uh, aspect of it is that I'm constantly looking for the best possible options the best scenarios the best way to help those around me and though I came into the fitness industry through a peephole, you know, I just, I had a very, very small view of the world. I was looking at it like this. It's since expanded and I'm able to look at it in so many different ways that I feel almost obligated that I should just be always looking, be empathetic, be understanding how different people see things so that I can better help them and serve them because yes, <clears throat> one size fits all works great. If it works for you and it and it's and it's been something you've had success with, I know a lot of people coach that way. Like this is how I do it. This is how it's done. This is how winners do it. This is why these people are champions because they do it this way. That's not usually the case, right? There's not a one size fits all approach to success. And for that reason, it's great to be involved in things like, you know, camps and seminars and events. And I've been so blessed to be involved in a lot of that and I was very blessed when I moved to Tampa because when I moved to Tampa, there is a graduate program and an undergraduate program in exercise science, which kind of covers the whole spectrum of the physiology of exercise, the psychology of exercise. And I've been exposed to so much just because I've been associated with that. In fact, sitting over here is Steven, who, when I first took my exercise physiology class, was the loudmouth in the class, but he also knew a lot. And I, I, I remember him understanding things on a very deep level. And so we immediately became friends. He was a competitor. And now Steven works for me. And Steven's in the graduate program at USF. So just, just my desire to want to know more and do better led me to taking classes at USF, led me to Steven, who has been an amazing coach. He now works for me as a full-time as a coach. And so that's just one anecdotal piece of evidence for me that says, okay, if I hadn't stepped outside of my comfort zone, you know, I had plenty of clients, I was very busy, I was traveling, I was working, I didn't need to go back to school. But I did need to go back to school for me because I'm never happy, I never want to be settled with where I currently am. One thing I think you'll find about learning and education and bettering yourself is that that process only creates more desire to learn more, to do more, to be more. Because once you start really learning, you realize how very little you know. You know, I think anyone that I've talked to that's gone on to get a PhD or any kind of postdoc or graduate work, it's because when you get an undergraduate degree, it's almost like you're opened up to all this information, but you still don't know shit, right? You still know very little. And so, honestly, I feel obligated and I feel honored that I get to go spend time with some of the smartest people in the world whose sole focus in many situations is one tiny aspect of nutrition or training. You know, uh, Dr. Mike Zordos is, uh, is down in South Florida and he's studying one specific type of training, undulating periodization. This man has a PhD in exercise science and yet he has taken his focus his passion to one tiny thing right and that's what happens when you start to understand that there's so much to learn you can't be an expert in all of it and that's something i'll never be an expert in is everything but what i really like to do is as a coach kind of have the ability to look at things make good decisions and choose information that i feel is best the things that i do now as a coach five years ago 
I didn't even understand. I didn't even know about. Last year, spending, you know, three weeks with Eric Helms kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things that he does. You know, I've had talks with other great coaches like Cliff Wilson, you know, friends like my, uh, you know, like Lane Norton, obviously. And, you know, I get to spend time with Dr. Campbell. Um, and just being around people that are doing things, that are experiencing things, that are putting in the work day in and day out, this is how we get better. How can you apply this to your life? Just pay attention to opportunities. If someone's doing something that you think is fantastic, pay attention to that. Try to get involved. Be associated with it. You know, uh, Lauren Conlon, who is, um, you know, just graduated with her master's degree from USF as well, uh, is someone I hold in the highest regard. She is always trying to better herself, always looking for the next thing. She is going up to Atlanta this weekend, and she's going to be having lunch with Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Amazing. But it's because she put herself out there and she's trying to move forward and do more things and understand more. And I think the biggest message that I just wanted to talk about today was like, don't be afraid to grow as a person, even if it means you kind of have to smash the dogma that were things that you kind of held true before. Um, you know, being open and honest with yourself oftentimes can be kind of scary because you're worried about how people are going to view you based on how you've kind of displayed yourself in the past, but don't let that hold you back. You know, if you're having a change of heart, if you're having a change of feeling, if you're seeing things in a different way, let that happen. Experience that and explore what that's going to lead to because I promise you uh, it's just going to lead to a better version of yourself. I wake up every day more excited than the last and I'm more excited about where things are going than where they have been, which is not something that was always true of my life. You know, you know, working a nine to five, doing things like the same day over and over, um, you know, it definitely wore me down and although I had a nice life and I was doing okay, it's a little bit different than when you're literally every single day excited about what you get to do, chasing your passion. Um, and I don't want to overuse the word passion because yes, although I'm passionate about fitness and stuff, it's still something that requires a lot of work. It's just that when you get to do something that you really, really enjoy, the work kind of flies by. You kind of get in the zone. You know, I remember when I was a young kid and I was really into art and painting and drawing. I would sit in my room at my art desk for like hours at a time and time didn't even matter. Like it would literally like four or five hours would, would pass by um, and I wouldn't even notice it because, because I would get in the zone. And that's kind of where I've gotten to in my life now is that I can sit down, do client work, um, think about content, think about where the future is going and I just get in the zone and like whole days go by, right? So it's a good thing I go to the gym because it helps me break up my day. So anyway guys, that's going to be it. Short message today, a little bit ranty. Just wanted to give you a little bit of my philosophy, what I've been thinking um, and what's kind of caused me to kind of come out with some content lately of this nature. And it's stuff that, you know, in the past, you know, there's like a pe group of people that IIFYM is, they're, that's, they're harsh believers and clean eaters, they're harsh believers. And so, you know, it's kind of a discussion that can lead to some negative comments, but I don't get any of that. You know, I think you guys really get me and we really enjoying this thing together. So yeah, if you guys know what I'm saying, let me hear about it below. I want you guys to have an awesome Wednesday and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, and my man, Steven, had a great idea for a video, so let me know if you think this would be a good topic. What we're going to do is, we're gonna actually talk about the science of why clean eating and a structured meal plan and having uh, like macro and micro dense food might actually be better for you. A little bit of evidence, right? That maybe true IIFYM, where you're kind of eating crap just to hit your numbers, might actually not be the best thing for you. All right, guys, that's going to be it. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.